Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about HTML form elements and Python. Basically how to deal with HTML forms in Python. And what I got here is a uh, simple uh, Python file which generates that HTML here. I'm generating a text field, I'm generating uh, two radio buttons, and I'm generating a drop down plus again the, the send button. Now if I do anything with this here, and send, nothing happens, which just remains empty, regardless of what I do. I'm not getting any results, I'm not getting any, any action done. So uh, an HTML form on its own is not gonna do anything. Uh, we have to use Python here to grab whatever the user input and do something with it. And uh, let's get started. So how do, we, how do we start about it? Well, in order to, um, get form data or form inputs you need to import a certain module called cgi and then after that what what you do is you create a variable call whatever you want i'm going to call it form inputs and that form input is basically cgi dot field storage so now i've got my oh equal <clears throat> So now I've got my variable and here, which is basically a CGI object. And now I can print the inputs I have. For instance, let's start, let's say I'm interested in printing out the names I input. The, the field name is, uh, the, the, the text field's name is called name. And what I do here, if I need to see whatever I input, print, let's, convert to string and basically form inputs that's our variable holding all form inputs and what I need is get value of the field name that I'm, that I'm interested in which is basically here name so I just input that name and oops close close and close right and save that so now if I try and put in John and sent, oops, John and sent, I'm getting John down here. And obviously if I, I can do the same thing with the next field, with this, this field is called gender. And let's print the BR, basically a line break. Oops. And again here. And let's print the last field, which is basically the grade. Right, save it. And now let's try it out again. Mary, female, and grade of B. And send. And I've got all these things here. So I got that. No, no, no problem with that. And you see how that works. So we were now able to extract the inputs. Now, one thing bothered me is that my inputs, uh, as soon as I send my inputs are lost in the forms. How can I keep them? Well, um, the thing is, and another thing what's bugging me, let me just uh, copy that link and open a new thing. And if I do now, I have in this form, I have no inputs, and you see I've got these nuts. Very not very nice, very irritating. So how can I, uh, you know, avoid these two things? First of all, these nuns when I when I call the empty form, and another thing is, uh, you know, losing that that content in the fields. Well, um, first of all, let's 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 tackle this problem. And this problem is like this. Uh, we can go. And take it like this. We can call. Um, we create a new variable. Let's call it name. Well, let me let me do it simple first. We can call a new variable. A uh, new variable, and we do it like this. Uh, if and if uh, form inputs name is none then input name is um, nothing, an empty string, else 
uh, input input name else uh, cola input name is form inputs get value name and yeah not. right okay save now let's try it out if i go here in this form where i didn't put anything in and reload uh, oh yeah sorry i i must hear i must not print um i must print input name so instead of all that what i'm printing now is input name and if i reload I've lost one none and I can do the same thing with the other two but first of all let's do a simple thing now you see here this is an if statement this can be reduced to a one line and you can write it like this uh, input name is equal to empty string if uh, here and then else it is this so i don't need those four lines i can do it in one line and it has the same effect and if you try that you can see it has the same effect i can do the same thing now with other with other three fields and i don't have these nuns anymore if i call the form with an empty name so the second field was gender and gender and gender and then the third one would be great and now and that's how I advise to I advise you to do that with all your inputs because uh, this way if an input is not input, is not insert, is not the input by the user, you don't get the num, but you get an empty string, which also eases up or simplifies also your conditions and so on. So let's go in here, and that would be gender, input gender. And that would be input grade. And if I save that, and now reload here so this problem of calling uh, you know that form with no inputs i'm getting no more nuns so this is one problem solved now the next problem is how do i handle uh, uh, python so that it saves the, the inputs well for text fields there's there's a there's a value called uh, there's a there's a parameter called value and i can place it anywhere so let's say value is equal and then open um, uh, double quotes and now I terminate and then I add whatever input I have you know input my input name and I better be, uh, let me do it like this I better take these above so they're defined before using them right now that's much better so now plus plus what plus input name the variable input name and then plus and then the rest of the string which is basically close the double quotes close these double quotes and space and then we've got name and so on so let's try it out and i better do a string i always like to do that in case right okay so now if i try it out if i go and say john and mail and grade C and send I'm retaining John I'm still losing these but I'm retaining John you see so now how do I retain these well with uh, with drop downs with a drop down you have a parameter called check so basically I'll show you an example if I let's say if I need to select B. I'd have. I need to have B selected in here, and um, it has to be automatic. So let's let's let's. I need to add <clears throat> the word selected in here. Save that, and if I send, you'd see it selects automatically B. 
And the same thing I could do with any other grade. So what I need now is for uh, Python to select automatically the choice I did. Now, doing it in here is quite tedious because then I would have to have a, a you know, I could do it, I'll show you a, a, a primitive way of doing it. For instance, I'd go um, selected grade, selected grade is nothing. And now if um, input grade is equal to A, then uh, select the grade A, and that's my select the grade A is equal to selected. So, and I would have to do that, and then I would have, I need to input the variable in here. So, uh, let's go in here, and then, same thing as before, terminate that part of the string, and let's do a space, terminate that part of the string, then plus, selected grade, A, and then, plus, and then, Take the rest of the string. So that's one way of doing it. And then I would have to repeat that process for all the other grades. And uh, let's try it out. Now, if I pick a grade, like if I pick C, and um, oh, I forgot to terminate the string here. So if I pick C and send, it should retain C. And it doesn't. However, if I pick A, it should retain A. And why doesn't it do it? Oh, okay. Uh, it should be lowercase a because lo the grade is lowercase a. Right, let's save it. Let's try it out again. If I do C or D, I don't retain the grade, but if I do A, I should retain the grade. And you see here, I'm retaining the grade because I've done this condition. I built this condition for A. But now I've got to do the same thing with all these conditions. So, you know, one way of doing it is basically like this. So guys, now you see here what I did, I simplified the if condition, I put, I made a one-liner out of previous if, I, I, I copied the code for all the other grades and just, uh, you know, changed the grade. And same thing I did here, I just, uh, you know, the same thing what I did with A, I did it for the remaining grades. Now let's try it out, now it should retain any grade, and C, I send it, it retains the C, if I do a D, it retains the D and so on. So I'm, I'm retaining both the name and the grade. Now that's one way of doing it. A better way of doing drop downs is basically using a loop. And with a loop, you don't have this copy and paste. So for the loop, it's like this. Uh, you, you first have this thing. This doesn't need a loop. So let, let me cut that out. That goes in here. And then I do a loop for I in. And now what I need, I need the first of all, a list of grades. So we have here the grades are, let me, let me just put the, um, um, the grades and that's a that's a list and that's basically a b c d e and f and close the list so now for i in Range uh, for i in range len and then the grades Good. and did I misspell range? Yes, I did. And then what I do, I just print. Let's take this as a template. I just print print option, and now instead of a, I just terminate the string here and then plus i, or uh, sorry, grades, grades, i, so I don't need the a, then plus, and then plus, and then plus selected grade, and then, now here comes a condition, which I can put in here, if um, grades, 
i is equal to if that grade in the loop is equal to uh, input grade then uh, selected or did, what, would, what, would, what did we call it selected grade is equal to selected else uh, select a grade is equal to empty string right and obviously that's that's the end thing what I do then I can input select a grade as a variable in here or it is already in here without the a and then plus and then here again I terminate that string plus uh, and then I could caps upper so I remove the A and just take um, grades dot I and then upper to get the uppercase letter and then plus and that's the end of the string so I got like print option value open then I got the grade in lowercase then plus either you get selected or not depending if the grade in the loop is equal to the input grade and then I've got uh, the labeling of that grade which is in uppercase and then closing the string right that should go and I don't need all of that and that simplifies matters enormously and I can even simplify that when I'd say select the grade is selected if this is like this else it is an empty string so again I saved me a couple of lines and now I've got a simple loop which uh, does the same thing without me um, you know having to copy paste the uh, gazillion of uh, you know of, of, of the stuff what I did previously and then here obviously I terminate the the drop down now let's try it out I save that and let's try it out does it reload yep it works so now let's try it out let's go pick B send and it retains B it retains C and so on so again when you when you face drop downs it's always better to have a loop doing them instead of um, instead of um, you know doing copy paste because some drop downs could be pretty long and you know anyways even if you got like more than two or three elements it's you don't want to copy that you know it's, it's much easier to do a loop so now we come to the radio buttons how can I retain the radio buttons and these need a parameter called checked so if I go like checked save that and send you see now mail is checked so I gotta do the same thing here and here because we just got two I'm not gonna go into a loop here I'm gonna do what I did previously with um, with the grades so I can go and say gender uh, checked uh, mail and that is equal and that is if uh, is equal to checked if input gender is equal to mail else so and then the same thing we do for female and now we are able to retain all our inputs uh, female check if input is female right save that so now if I press uh, female take put in Mary and give a grade of uh, a and let's go and you see now I'm retaining oh I'm not retaining female why is that okay have I done a mistake here oh obviously silly me I forgot to input the uh, <laughs> the um, the variable in here so I just close that plus string uh, gender check gender check mail well actually uh, yeah I'll leave it like this now and go plus and then carry on that string and the same thing I do here let me just copy that it goes much faster and I just put it in here right and gender check 
female. Right. So now it should work. Save it. And let's tr try it out again. And you see now I'm retaining everything. So let's try it out with John. John, he's male. He's got a D and send. So I'm now getting all the outputs and retaining all these inputs. So now you see here, now obviously, obviously in most cases, you don't print the inputs, but you do something with them. Now, obviously you see here the way you deal with forms. So first of all, just to summarize, we needed CGI, import CGI. Then we created a variable, which is CGI field storage. And then to get the individual, um, to get the individual uh, inputs, we use form inputs, basically the variable we just created, and then get value on whatever the field name is called. And then we put a condition here. So if you have no field inputs, you would ha don't have, you know, if you don't get none, but you get an empty string, you can also put some default values in here. And, um, you know, if I, if I just put here, uh, you know, uh, John Doe, then, Next time I, I, I call my, my, my app uh, with no inputs, I get John Doe as, as, a, as a default user, you know? And you can do that or you leave it empty, up to you. And then what you do, you have to see, I mean, it's much more pleasant to use an application which retains the inputs. So you do that with text fields, you do that with, um, with, the, with, with value, and then you get the, the variable, the input that the user input. With radio buttons, you do it with a, with a parameter called checked, and you have to generate that here. We did that here manually for both. And obviously, if you've got more than a loop would make sense. And same thing we did here with a dropdown. Now here with a dropdown, doing it manually like this, as you saw, would work, but is not like sensible. So that's why we use the loop. We put all the grades in a, in a in a list or tuple, you can put them in a tuple and then loop through that list or tuple and then you would get, it makes, makes the whole thing much easier. And here again, we use the parameter selected, uh, uh, the parameter selected via this variable selected grade to enable the dropdown to retain the input of the user. So, and that's how you handle forms in, uh, in Python. Now, as you notice here, it's pure Python. I haven't used any framework or anything. I just, uh, Described that in a previous video, if you're if you're using a web, uh, uh, you want to use uh, Python as a web app, just uh, you know, uh, you know, set up your server. I've set up here a local host and uh, with Zap, and um, it is in a video. I'll put the link the the link to the video in the description. But uh, you can easily create uh, Python web apps without any frameworks. Just basically set up your host or your server, and then. Uh, Make sure you have the path to your Python uh, exit and then uh, that line. You can't print anything above that line. So it's, that's why you see all my print statements which are generating all the HTML are taking place after this line. Anything before is, you can do any, any code bef ahead of that line. However, no printing. So and that is in a nutshell uh, how you handle forms in Python without any frameworks.